Good morning. Today we will be introducing the concept of a database and then we will be discussing the available data conceptual models. Specifically, we will be defining what is a database in a specific context. We will be giving an abstract view of a database system with respect to its components. We will be discussing the three fundamental families of data and then we will be focusing on the structured data. Then we will be introducing the entity relationship conceptual model which was invented by Professor Peter Shen 1976. Uh, we will be introducing the concepts of entity, attribute, relationship and we will be giving the corresponding semantics and of course we will be having a lot of examples in order to get the meaning of this entity relationship conceptual model and finally we will be discussing how we can query the entity relationship conceptual model in order to get the information that we have stored okay what is a database before starting with providing a definition of the database I would like to give you an observation that as human beings, we are making decisions based on the information and the data that, were, that we observe. But we have certain limitations. This limitation might be, let's say, uh, our memory capacity, or even if we have infinite memory capacity, then we cannot recall information efficiently. In that case, we are defining a base where we can put there all the pieces of data that we need in order to proceed with decision making and especially we are trying to build over this base efficient optimization algorithms that can manage the data and there are four fundamental operations over the data uh, the first one is how to insert a piece of data how to delete a piece of data, how to update a specific feature of a specific piece of data, and of course, how to recall or to search for a specific piece of data efficiently. There are many databases at the time being in different application domains. We are building a specific database for a specific application. For instance, Imagine the databases in Google. We are having databases in order to store web page links, to navigate from one web page to another one, or to facilitate the web search. In the data mining application domain, we are having databases in order to store multidimensional data, multidimensional information in order to analyze the data to discover certain patterns or trends or to identify outliers and so on and so forth. Of course, we are having the scientific and the medical databases which are used for drug discovery. And in Amazon, for instance, we are having databases where we are storing information or the preferences of the users and the profiles of the items in order to proceed with efficient recommendations. And of course, we are having a database in the University of Glasgow in order to store information about the staff members, or the students, the corresponding courses, and so on and so forth. Now, I will be giving three definitions of a database system from three different perspectives, from, the, uh, from a software engineer perspective, from the user perspective, and from a systems perspective. From the software engineering perspective, a database system is just an expensive piece of software that provides us the following functionality. First, we are provided an interface about how to represent our knowledge, how to model our data. There are many data models. For instance, uh, the most known data model is the relational data model. 
where if the database system is adapting this data model for representing knowledge, then this is called a relational database system. And this is what we will be focusing on in this course. There are other data models like the object-oriented data model. You might have seen that if you are having some experience with programming in Java or Python. There are first, or first order logic data models when we're dealing with AI applications or with fuzzy logic data modeling when we're dealing with uncertainty and so on and so forth. But we will be focusing on the relational data modeling. We're provided access to the data and, specific, and specifically we're provided the three fundamental operations. I recall them again here is insert, delete, update and query or search for a piece of data. We are also provided the functionality of analyzing the data. For instance, we can build histograms of, of specific features or we can visualize multidimensional spaces and all this information, all this functionality is provided by the database system. Of course, the database system is responsible for physically storing the data from the memory to the hard disk and of course is responsible for retrieving data from the hard disks to the memory. The database system is also securing the data by controlling the access to sensitive or confidential data. And the database system is responsible for maintaining the data consistency because we have to deal with a situation where something bad is happening. For instance, what is happening when disk crashes or when we are experiencing power cuts. The software of the database system is responsible for recovering the lost data from these failures. And finally, we are provided optimized data access because the, this piece of software is a bunch of optimization algorithms running over advanced data structures in order to achieve fast access to the data. So this is the whole functionality that we can get from a database system uh, focusing on a software engineering perspective. From the user perspective, we can envisage the database system as a black box where we are provided just two interfaces. One interface is the data modeling interface. We have to know how the database system is interpreting our knowledge representation of the data. And of course, there is another interface, which is the most fundamental one, which is how to speak to the database system. So it means that we have to speak with the same language that is machine comprehensible for the database system. And this language is the SQL, Structured Query Language. The SQL language is a declarative programming language which is different from any other procedural programming language like Java, Python, C, C++, and so on and so forth. Why? Because declarative programming language means that we are telling the system, in our case, the database system, what to do for us and not how to do the task. We are just giving orders to the database system in order to retrieve data. We don't tell the system how to process our query in order to efficiently retrieve the data because we don't have access to the computational resources. Actually, Imagine that we are sitting here in front of an interface of a database system. We are issuing queries to the database system. The system itself knows exactly how to optimally process the query. And then we're getting this information back. In this course, we will be sitting to the left side of this slide in order to be the users asking for data from a database system and not telling the database system how to find this data.
from a systems perspective, which means that we are about to identify which are the fundamental software components within the database system, we are getting this diagram. These are the users as we discussed, and in the database system there exists a specific software component which is the database connector. It's the application that bridges the information coming from the users using SQL with the rest of the system. So, an SQL, an SQL query is coming through this application and then goes directly to the parser. The parser is checking for any syntactical errors we might have in our SQL query. If, if everything is okay, then this query is going towards to the optimizer. The query optimizer is trying to find the best sequence of the underlying processing algorithms in order to efficiently execute our query. That's why we don't need to tell the system how to do a task. The system knows exactly how to optimally process our query because it has an optimizer component. After finding the best optimization sequence of the processing algorithms, then the system is invoking all these processing algorithms with access to the computational resources, the CPU, the memory, the data files, and so on and so forth. Then, with an interaction with the operating system, our query is executed. The database system is, provi is, 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 is providing a software code on the fly in order to execute our query. So this means that we need to have access to the data files. They might be local data files or they might be distributed data files, depending on whether we're having a local database or a distributed database. And then the information is getting back, the results are getting back through this database connector to the user interface. Now, enough of my sayings about what is a database system and the corresponding components. We need to investigate a little bit about the nature of the data that can be stored and managed in a database system, and specifically in a relational database system. There are three fundamental families of data. The first one is the structured data where it means that we have well-defined data structures in order to interpret the data. Most of the time we are using tables as a data structure in order to interpret the data. Of course, there are other advanced data structures like graphs or trees and so on and so forth. For instance, in that case, we have a column where the label of the column is the metadata information about to interpret, interpret all these values, all this data. So this is a well-defined data structure, which is just a column. For instance, the three kilograms, three is the data and kilogram is metadata, is information about the data. So we know exactly or which is the meaning of all these values. In the unstructured data on the other end of the spectrum, we are dealing with less interpretable data. For instance, data coming from web pages, text, sensor measurements, and so on, so on and so forth. We cannot, we cannot interpret the data because we don't have any specific structure. For instance, imagine that now we are having this series of data values. We don't know exactly which is the meaning of each specific value because there is no metadata information to interpret this value. And somewhere in between, we are having the semi-structured data. Semi-structured data are data that can, that, that can describe themselves, that can interpret themselves written in specific markup languages like XML. 
For instance, this is a semi-structured piece of data. We know exactly that this symbol here, it can be the number three or the character three, but we know that this thing here, the red thing in between these tags here is a real number and corresponds to the kilogram of an object. So this is a self-descriptive piece of data. Traditional database systems are focusing on structured data. And the relational data modeling is based on structured data. Now, modern database systems and specifically big data systems can manage all the families of these, all the families of data, like dealing with documents, graphs, multimedia content, and so on and so forth. We will be focusing on structured data in this course. <laughs> 